When it comes to John Hickenlooper, there's two things that everyone should know. The first is that he watched porn with his mom. I'm not kidding about this. So I took my mother to see Deep Throat. And... <laughs> Told you. And the second thing you should know is that he is, for some reason, conspicuously concerned with the profits of Facebook. So during the Facebook whistleblower's testimony before the Senate Commerce Committee, he inquired about Facebook's profits. And, you know, at first, this isn't necessarily too weird, but I'll show you his question followed by her answer. Obviously, Facebook can manipulate its algorithms to attract users. Um, and I guess my question would be, do you feel, in your humble opinion, that, you know, simply maximizing profits, no matter the societal impact, that that, that is justified? Um, and I think the question then would be, that that's the, the short question, which I think I know the answer. What impact to uh, Facebook's bottom line would it have if the algorithm was changed to promote safety uh, and to, instead of, to pr change to, to, to save the lives of young women rather than putting them at risk? Um, Facebook today uh, has a, a, a profit, is, uh, makes approximately $40 billion a year in profit. A lot of the changes that I'm talking about are, are not going to make uh, Facebook an unprofitable company, it just won't be a ludicrously profitable company like it is today. Um, Engagement-based ranking, which causes those amplification problems that leads young women from you know, innocuous topics like healthy recipes to anorexia content. Um, if it were removed, face people would consume less content on Facebook, but Facebook would still be profitable. And so uh, I, I, I encourage oversight and public scrutiny into how these algorithms work and the consequences of them. Okay, so in short, yes, Facebook would indeed lose profits if they changed the algorithm. Now, this isn't the most bizarre question for a lawmaker to ask, knowing that these private companies have a fiduciary responsibility to increase shareholder value. Of course, they're not going to willingly do something that hurts their bottom line. So you need to know whether or not this is the case so you can figure out the right course of action to take. And in this instance, of course, you should do regulations because knowing that Facebook is a greedy company with one goal to make money, they're not going to willingly change something that, uh, you know, makes them so much money. So that means you have to force them to make this change via regulation. So at that point in time, you get your answer. Of course, you move on to the next topic, except John Hickenlooper stays on the topic of Facebook's bottom line a little bit longer with another question. I'm a former small business owner. I owned a, yeah. uh, started a brew pub back in 1988. Uh, and really was always, we worked very hard to, to look, again, we weren't doing investigations, but we were very sensitive to whether someone had had too much to drink, whether we had a frequent customer who was frequently putting himself at risk and, and others. Um, Obviously, I think the, the Facebook business model puts, uh, well, poses risk to, to youth and to, and to teens. Uh, you cared, compared it to cigarette companies, which I thought was rightfully so. Um, if this, I guess the question is, is this level of risk appropriate? Uh, or is there a level of risk that would be appropriate? Okay, so that's kind of a weird question. This is the former Facebook product manager, not an expert in sociology, John. So I guess I just don't really follow what your point is. Are you implying that overall it's worse for society if Facebook loses their profits? I, 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 what are you getting at, right? And she made a pretty solid point about the fact that, you, you know, it, it might hurt them in the short term, but in the long term, if they change this algorithm and they don't willingly promote hate for purposes of profit, it could help them with future revenue. Because if less people are leaving the platform because it's so toxic, maybe that helps them in the long term. So you'd think, all right, we've got two questions about Facebook's profitability. It's time to either yield back your time or move on. Well, no, he brings up profits again. Um, I also thought that the... Um the question of, of how do we assess the impact to their bottom line. Uh, we had a representative of Facebook in here recently who talked about that eight out of 10 
uh, Facebook users feel their life is better and that their job is to get to 10 out of 10. Maybe this is the 2 the 20 percent that they're missing. I don't know how large that the demographic is of, of people that are caught back up into this circuitous, uh, circuitous uh, you know, sense of, of, of really taking them down into a, 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 the wrong direction, how many people that is. Do you have any idea? Okay, this is strange. You no longer sound like a politician who's inquiring about a company's policy. You sound like a businessman who's weighing the pros and cons about the short and long-term profits of a company. It's almost like he has stock in the company. Like, that's what it sounds like to me, except that's exactly the case. He's asking these questions. He's so concerned about Facebook's profits because he literally has stock in the company. As Donald Shaw of Sludge reports, while inquiring on Facebook's bottom line, Hickenlooper is invested in the company. The senator's Facebook shares are worth as much as $500,000. So he was presumably concerned about Facebook's profits because it also impacts his wallet as well. This is an obvious, obvious conflict of interest. And lawmakers shouldn't be allowed to have stocks. Why are they allowed to own stocks in companies that they're supposed to be regulating? Doesn't this seem kind of fucked up? Doesn't this seem like a system that is designed to fail and skew towards the business class of the United States? That's exactly the case. And it gets worse than that because it's not just that he's overly curious about Facebook's profits. It also influenced him as a lawmaker. It influences what he chooses to support and not support. So Shaw adds, the senator is not a co-sponsor of the major democratic antitrust bill, the Competition and Antitrust Law Enforcement Reform Act, introduced in February by Senator Amy Klobuchar. The only bill Hickenlooper is co-sponsoring in the science, technology, communications policy area, according to Congress.gov, is a bill from Republican Senator Roger Wicker that, according to a summary from Senator Hickenlooper and Wicker, would require the National Telecommunications and Information Administration to establish a test bed to develop and demonstrate innovative supply chain technologies and applications and establish a grant program to promote the participation of U.S. companies in international standard setting bodies. The bill is intended to help U.S. companies develop new products to compete with Chinese competitors. Hickenlooper, who is worth at least $7.8 million on stock in several other tech companies, including Microsoft, Automatic Data Processing, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Intel, and NVIDIA. So there you have it. That's why he's so concerned with Facebook's profits. That's why, presumably, he's not signing on to legislation that would hurt Facebook because it would hurt their bottom line. So this is why these sorts of conflicts of interest shouldn't exist. This is why lawmakers shouldn't be allowed to own stocks in companies that they're supposed to be regulating. But It's sort of a difficult situation to get out of because how do you convince lawmakers who all own stocks in different companies and industries to pass legislation that bans them from owning stocks in industries? I mean, it's it's like them cutting off their own noses to appease everyone else, and they're not going to do that. They're not going to do something that would impact them and their bottom line, and John Hickenlooper is a multimillionaire. He doesn't need to be concerned with Facebook bringing in additional profits. But this is the game. This is the way that it's played. And it's sickening, but it's not surprising.